Hello everyone. Am I live? Yeah. Oh, I don't see my thing bouncing up and down, so I just wondered. There we are. Hedgy voice. Hello everyone, this is Hedgy. It's a nice Saturday uh, evening. Um, if you hear any loud bangs, uh, we have neighbors that are moving out, so um, any pink pig. Here comes a pink pig. Pink pig, yay! Oh no! Oh no! It's dread pig. <laughs> <laughs> I have to show you the relative size of pink pig and her big brother dread pig. Dread pig came first, and uh, I know that when. Mrs. Uh, Nog shows up, she will want to see Dread Pig. See, they both have that family resemblance and the big smile. So, there we go for that. Pig Pig! Yay! You saw him? Here, let me get him out for you again then. Pig! Rah! I have a feeling that's going to end up on my on a cut thing anyway. Dread pig is huge. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I promised I would bring out dread pig and show you pink pig's older brother. So, uh, anyway, hello, Mrs. Nog. Uh, I hope Nog is feeling better, but he said he was feeling gross, so he probably wouldn't be here. Um, thank you everyone who's come, Jake and Jack and uh, Mav, and I'm assuming Mrs. Mav is somewhere around there, and uh, others who may not have said hello. Welcome in. This is... Uh, Where's my thanks? You're making coffee for yourself and not getting me any coffee, honey, so, you know, you don't get thanked. Well, I see a problem with this. So it's it's very very sad to be locked out of a and such a lovely nice drink. Anyway, um, so this is Saturday, and I had originally planned on doing chicken a la king, but unfortunately I woke up very nauseous this morning, and I just couldn't face the idea of smelling any kind of um, meat, and especially not having to taste it. So I decided, says people had been asking me, how do you make omelets? Um, I thought I would show people how you make omelets. Um, I'm also going to be revisiting scrambled eggs because uh, I have to cook dinner for mom too. And it would be a very, very short stream if I just showed you how to make omelets, made one and left. <laughs> Um, there is also a probability that I will be making creamed salmon on toast, which is what I'm going to be eating because I also have a problem with sulfur, so I won't be eating eggs. Um, so this is, I kind of did a version of this. I did it with tuna and <laughs> I kind of did it with tuna and I said at the time that it was a take on what, something that my grandma made, which was creamed salmon on toast. And so that is what I am going to have because, darn it, that's what I want. So anyway, uh, let's start out talking about omelets. Um, I make a baked omelet, which uh, I whip up the eggs and put it, in a, put it in a baking. I really would like coffee, honey. And I, uh, uh, I put it in a baking dish and put whatever toppings can be baked with it in there. And... Put it in the oven and it cooks for f about 40 45 minutes and it comes out and we've got this lovely egg dish and you can cut it into slabs and then you put whatever other toppings you want to put on it um, for instance in my bacon cheeseburger uh, pardon me mushroom cheeseburger omelet we put in mushrooms and hamburger and baked the eggs that way because my mom can't have uh, mom can't have cheese 
So we put cheese in everybody else's and then uh, we put in sliced onion or put on sliced onion, uh, diced tomato, uh, sliced pickles and some lettuce and then laced it with ketchup and Thousand Island dressing and it was just really 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 good. Ninja chop. That's interesting. Was that a bot? Uh, yeah. They're getting to be more interesting with the names they're coming out with for the bots. Um. And that's how I make a baked omelet. And it's just easier than the more fussy measuring. Uh, where you, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, it's just easier than doing the more fussy uh, folded omelet or rolled omelet. And I don't actually do the, the nice pretty rolled omelet where both ends are tucked under kind of like a burrito. Uh, I did. I saw kink shaming and I was thinking, what? <laughs> um, I just do the fold in half like it's a, uh, a taco version. But that's something that apparently uh, people don't know how to do, or at least some of my viewers uh, don't know how to do. And um, so I will show everybody how to do that. Now, in general, although if you are making this for a child or someone with a much smaller appetite, um, you probably are not going to make a three egg omelet, but a three to four egg omelet is standard for an adult for, uh, for instance, a breakfast or dinner. And so I have got here, these are large eggs and since this first one's going to be for Andrew, I'm going to make it out of four eggs. So, uh, there's even an interesting thing I saw about um, how you should crack eggs. Um, in the United States, we wash all of our eggs, and that makes it so that we have to have them refrigerated, but we generally believe that they are cleaner. You can still, there is still a risk of salmonella with eggs. Um, and one thought, if you break the egg on the side of something, is you're actually punching into the egg. And what you're doing then is um, having a bigger risk of the salmonella because you have actually breached the interior of the egg. And they say how you should do it is there on a flat surface. Okay? So I will do it on a flat surface this time. Um, A stubborn little egg. And uh, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. And there's the third little piece. And there's the fourth egg. Okay, so we'll discuss this for a moment. The reason why, everyone can hear me by the way. The reason why the EU says not to wash the eggs is to prevent damaging of the external layer around the egg, mm -hmm. the uh, cuticle or bloom, which is not wet when the egg emerges. But once it dries, it hardens and creates a, an effective barrier. But by washing it, you can remove that. In fact, the US uh, DA uh, concedes that yes, this does happen when you wash the egg. So. As a result, the eggs are sprayed with a mineral oil. So that's why you can't buy US eggs in the in the EU or the UK, because you'll get rid of that protective layer. And you can't get European eggs over here because well, you, know. you guys don't wash your eggs. Okay. So now we know. Uh, well, there's a lot of things we can't do over here. I can't give blood. <laughs> Neither can I. So um, to your omelet, you want to add about a teaspoon or ta to a tablespoon of milk. It just makes the eggs a little lighter. And then something that uh, I started doing recently, um, I add a little bit. I'm hearing a word. Yeah, it's whiskey. 
Mm, no, I don't add whiskey. Shame on you. I'm hearing clicking. Anyway, uh, I add a pinch of flour to an omelet that helps the eggs keep their loft, basically. So I am going to add the equivalent of maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of flour. And I've got a really weird whisk this time. For some reason, both of our other whisks that are the usual kind of whip shape ones have gone missing in action. So we've got this weird little thing. Uh, but I wanted to have a whisk, so a whisk I have. You wanted to join the great egg war. I did. And then you want to uh, whisk it as smooth as you Not can. The whisks. You want to whisk it as smooth as you can so that you have the flour and milk incorporated. And in addition to this, you also want to have not so many separations between the uh, white and the yellow, uh, the yolk and the white of the egg. So we just keep whipping. Th this thing really does not work that well. I'm very disappointed. Does anybody actually use this kind of whisk? I mean, they're just, they're just weird, aren't they? Okay, I am going to add a little bit of parsley to this because it makes it pretty. And it also puts in extra iron. And I'm not adding very much because this is a single person egg set dish. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Today our uh, egg dish, our egg omelet, is going to be a four egg omelet with shredded Colby Jack cheese. It's going to have some mushrooms in it and it's going to have bacon. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a couple flat whisks like this and I always thought, really, that's a whisk? That doesn't look like it would work that well. And the answer is, no it doesn't. I am not a fan. Yeah, I bet it does, but, you know, we usually keep our whisks in um, a utensil jar, so that's not really usually a uh, big deal. So I am going to turn on the heat underneath this to about a, a little bit over a medium, and I am going to use a spray canola oil. This is my uh, uh, copper diamond nonstick pan. And uh, it does very well for nonstick. I will say one thing. It doesn't matter if it's nonstick or not. You do not want to skimp on the uh, spray when you're making an omelet because you do not want that little devil to stick. I notice we don't have our second light on. I hope the light level's okay for everybody. So I've got this here. It needs to heat up a little bit. Um, and... I know that uh, some people have trouble with just frying eggs. They say, you know, I, I just can't, I just can't get it to flip without having the uh, egg break. And I know that uh, some people say I just can't do scrambled eggs. Either they're raw or they're uh, like little rubber balls. And I hear a lot of people say I can't do omelets. They're not really that different from each other, the omelets and the scrambled eggs. Um, the difference is with the scrambled eggs, you want to keep moving your whisk around in the thing or your spatula around versus an omelet where you only want to do it every now and then. So I am going to pour this out into the container we have here now. I would like to say I'm very good at making eggs. Oh, yeah, Andrew's great at making eggs. I go, Hedgy, I want eggs. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's no, very good at egg poaching donate. eggs for me, so that's very, very valuable. So you let the heat come up in this, and what you want to do with an omelet uh, or even scrambled eggs is when you first start out, you want to let the bottom of the eggs cook a little bit. And if you're talking about scrambled eggs, when you start to see the bottom of the eggs turning a different color, uh, they will actually turn a uh, flatter yellow instead of this translucent yellow that they are right now. 
And at that point, with the scrambled eggs, you just want to start stirring through here and doing the uh, uh, scraping up the bottom every now and then and, and kind of keeping it in larger bits. Uh, with an omelet, you want to, well, I'll show you, you want to basically pull from one side, pull from the other, pull from all four corners, and that lets the liquid top egg get underneath it so that it cooks faster, basically. This is not coming up to heat yet because I really should have had it doing heat earlier. Uh, these are solid cast iron plates. They give very even heat and very, and very long lasting heat, but it does take them a little while to get up the heat. Um, this is an older Farberware um, hot, pan, uh, hot plate, and uh, it, that's just kind of, it's slower, it has a lower uh, voltage in it, and it makes it so that it takes a little longer to heat. Okay, this is not yet starting to form the yellow. Does anyone else find that music loud, or do I just need to turn my headset down? It's probably just me. Okay, so, uh, there's a lot of myths you hear about eggs. A lot of people say, if you're going to make an omelet or you're going to make a scrambled egg, bring your eggs out, have them, you know, come to room temperature. That's the secret to a fluffy omelet. Um, I have not noticed a difference. Yeah, it just turned off. There you go. Do you hear music now? I do not add butter to my eggs. No. Uh, sometimes I will fry it with butter, but I don't add it to my omelets. It's just trying to be, the, the, our, our music is just trying to be a soft background music, and I think I hear it louder than anybody, so uh, I believe we are finally starting to get a little bit of, yep, we're starting to coagulate a little on the bottom, which is good. I have to remember this is not a Cuisinart pan, so it doesn't heat up as fast either as the other ones do. Anyway, so I have done the science on it. I have both let eggs be at room temperature and I have let eggs be right out of the refrigerator and ice cold. Doesn't seem to make a difference. Um, I don't see one kind of egg or the other kind of egg being so fluffy. It's Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. I can do that to you too, you know. See, it doesn't, see how you, when you look at this now, it's actually, although it's kind of liquidy at the edges, it is actually, if I pull it like this, you can see there's egg on the bottom now. And that's when you start getting your, your uh, omelet forming. And you basically want to roll it around a little bit, make sure it's got higher edges here. The idea behind uh, cooking an omelet is you don't cook them till they are rubber-like. You do not flip them. And if you were to cook these little things so that they uh, were cooked all the way through just on one side, you'd burn the living snot out of the bottom. So here we have this. What you want to do is just pull in like this. Just I'll make sure you can see what I just did. Pull in a little bit. And the liquid then flows in behind it. So you just go around your omelet, pulling in a little bit, letting the egg goo flow out. And you just want to keep doing that as you go around so that you get as much of the liquid egg on the bottom as possible. Okay. 
And what you'll see now is that we have a fairly a fairly heavy bottom with just a little bit of liquid on the top. And at this, this is the point where you can see it just jiggles a little bit, but not a lot. You're almost ready at this point to put your fillings in. Now, if you were going to make fillings that didn't need to be uh, melted or, you know, needed to be, if you, if you wanted to put something in here that needed to be cooked with it, for instance, vegetables, you would put it in while it's still liquid like this so that it doesn't, um, it has a chance to actually cook a bit. And we don't need to do that because aside from melting the cheese, the bacon I have here is already cooked. And the cheese just needs to melt. The mushrooms I'm going to put on this now are, well, they're canned. So I'm going to be profuse with the mushrooms. And you can either do it on two sides or one side. That's up to you. It depends on how much filling you want to put in your omelet. And I like to have a lot of filling in the omelets because, you know, stuff on the insides, it's really good stuff. So, and my husband likes mushrooms too. The other thing he really, really likes is bacon. So... I am going to get the bacon and sprinkle that heavily over his omelet. Because let's face it, my husband's a carnivore. And then I will take the cheese. And you could use, you know, mozzarella if you like. You could use jack cheese, cheddar, you know, any kind of cheddar you want. You could have... Uh, mild, medium, sharp cheddar, a mix of the three. They've got a really nice mix out now that's actually called three cheddar, and it's a combination of medium, mild, and sharp. So a lot of people find the sharp cheese to be a little overpowering, but you don't have to deal with that uh, here. So this is basically a finished omelet now. Uh, this is going to... Now slip gently out onto the plate, and then I will messily turn it over. Boy, is the dog going to be happy after this. And I thought we had a full-size plate. So this is very much going to be a crowded-looking thing. And now, you carefully slip your omelet onto a plate. <laughs> um, let me see if I can do this easily. I'm going to pull the omelet back into here. And I broke it, unfortunately. I know. So. Carefully mush this back together. Now the egg is cooked both inside and outside now, and the heat of the eggs that are cooked are going to be adding to the uh, melting of the cheese. You can add a little bit of cheese over the top. kind of a losing cause. Most of my things taste better than they look. Here comes Dread Pig again. <laughs> All right. I'll add a little bit of some parsley on top for the pretty. First time in chat, cold corn. Hey! Welcome in, cold corn. Nice to see you in here. You just saw me do a four egg omelet with bacon, mushrooms, and cheese that is going to my husband. And now, for an instant replay. 
since I'm cooking dinner for the whole family. Once again, you want to start with a lot of uh, spray. As you saw, I didn't really have to do much to uh, get it so that the awesome. Uh, I didn't have to do a lot to get it out of, sorry, I keep turning my head away. You don't have to do a lot to get your omelet out of the pan if you've got a good nonstick pan and you have oiled it sufficiently. So, this is going to be a three egg omelet because it's for my father. So, I'm going to break this one on the side. And yeah, we go through a lot of eggs and uh, we buy them by the five dozen usually because we like egg salad and omelets and poached eggs and all of that. I'm going to add a little splash of milk. And once again, this is about a teaspoon of milk. And I need to move that off the heat now. And I need to... Hydrate. I don't have anything to drink, honey. Thank you for the hydrate, cold corn. My husband will actually be forced to either bring me his coffee or provide me with, with my own coffee, or possibly a ginger ale. We add a little bit of parsley to it. Okay. We add a little bit of parsley to this. And I've got my liquid here for hydrate. It's a Coke. And thank you for the hydrate. It is a three egg omelet because my dad just doesn't eat any much anymore. He's going to be 82 in a couple months. And getting him to eat food at all is really difficult to do right now. I don't know why, but he's kind of given up eating. And uh, it is a constant challenge here. I am putting pepper in my father's eggs because my father likes pepper and eggs. And my husband hates pepper, so I didn't add any there. Now, this is whipped up well. This is actually at heat. So I'm going to now upend this into the pan. And then we start again. Okay. So, as I said before, this is a very good nonstick pan. They're not expensive anymore either to get a really nice one. This is the copper diamond plate. And, yeah, cheese omelets are good too. Um, I like cheese and mushroom just because, you know, I like mushrooms. You know that. Um, this is the exact same steps I did with the other. I roll up the sides a little bit. You want to learn how to cook? Well, watch my VODs and watch my stream and you'll learn. This is basically the same thing I did with my cousin for the first five or so years of her marriage because when I was teach, I was learning from Grandma, who my cousin Tara lived with her. Uh, actually, all of my cousins did. Grandma and Grandpa moved in with their mother. And uh, she paid attention to how do I make cakes? How do I make cookies? How do I make bread, Grandma? And I paid attention to how do you make eggs? How do you make a meal? So, as I said, we start by rolling this out so that the egg starts coagulating on the bottom everywhere. And as you can see here, the eggs are still very liquid on top. But at this point, what you do is now take the edges and you start pulling them towards you so that you get the eggs to come in around the outside. It makes a little ridge in the middle of the eggs. Don't worry about it. I am going to start pulling it from here. The best cooking you can do is in games. Usually I have a harder time in games doing the cooking. Um, I'm not that good at the time management games. Um, 
too many things going on at once. And yeah. And usually there's weird things going on in those games that would never happen in a real kitchen. So that's what makes it challenging in the games. And thank God it doesn't happen in the kitchen. You don't see things like, oh, look, your oven's on fire. Okay, so this is now at the point where I have made the little ridges in the middle. And most of this is turning... Uh, most of that is turning very thick, and it will very shortly be... Are you bringing that plate back out here for Dad's omelet? Yeah. Okay. I'm adding the mushrooms over the top of it, because fortunately my dad does like mushrooms. I don't think they have very many calories in them, but I know the bacon does, and I know he loves bacon, too. I don't know what's wrong with family. They have this weird thing about bacon. <laughs> okay, so that is all of that. I'm not going to use that for this. And then, uh, where did the cheese go? There is the cheese. I am going to add the cheese down. Melting while the other parts of this heat up. And it is what time delicious, it? thanks. It was delicious? Good. Put lots of cheese in here because after Especially all, with so coffee. He teases me all the time with coffee. And I rarely get it. Very, very sad. Here I'm going to throw into it. I am going to throw lots of bacon on top here. And this is making the omelet probably the most delicious. Share my coffee thick. with you, Hedgie, but I only have a 45 cup coffee urn. Yes, it's a shame you're so, so, so deprived like that. <laughs> but we really should post a picture of the, of the urn in the, in the Discord. Um, I haven't caught up with my uh, recipes. I don't have the soup recipes I made last week up yet. Uh, I will have directions for making an omelet for people. Now we have the plate here again, and what we are going to do is wiggle it back and forth, and as you can see, the whole thing moves. And that's because the... Uh, anti-stick is working like an anti-stick is supposed to. When you get to the halfway point, you just kind of turn and flip. Like that. So you start folding at the halfway point and what you end up with here, you can see it from the top, but you really don't get the impression of it yet. I'm going to put a little bit of cheese on top here, because why not? And as you can see, the eggs are browned, but not burned. That's what really you're going for. Let's put more cheese on top here. I doubt if I'm going to get him to eat all of this, but we'll give it a shot. So I will hold this up so everybody can admire this. And as you can see, let me see if I can tilt it a little. That's a pretty thick omelet. That is about I'll, an I'll inch thick. I'll be the thick. crowd. Ooh. <laughs> ah. You'll be the crowd. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Okay, so we have finished making two omelets. Now I am going to make... Uh, sorry. Now I am going to make some scrambled eggs. So this needs to be rinsed out really quickly because it has milk in it. And... I will put some parsley on top because it's pretty, and I think my husband's going to take another picture. Okay. Is that kind of the point? Yeah, that's kind of the point. Mostly it's about the eating of the eggs, but okay. 
And the next thing I'm going to do is scrambled eggs. She yells at the screen going, that's not how you cook. <laughs> he did answer you. He said the omelet is delicious. And it is also gone. So I guess it was pretty delicious. Right. So now I have got this back here. And I am going to take out some of the extra water so the egg doesn't go runny. And then I will be starting over and taking three eggs. Because like I said, three eggs is an average uh, adult portion. And this will be scrambled eggs for my mother. Because she wouldn't appreciate an omelet that had nothing in it. And she's on restricted salt. And she's allergic to dairy. So that isn't any fun for her. She also repeatedly tells everybody who will listen that she hates eggs because when she was four, she was on a uh, train and she had an egg that they made her eat and it was rotten. So she absolutely hates eggs. This is the same rule as, as anything else. I'm using oat milk here for her scrambled eggs. And I am adding just about a teaspoon. And then I will also add some parsley. I never knew oats had nipples. Well, they do. So I'm going to put some parsley in here because, well, women always need some extra protein, don't they? We can hear that banging. Sorry. All right, now I am going to whip this. I'm going to whip it like good. had a hammer and was going. Well, you know what they say. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening. All over this land. Which basically tells you that, yes, that, I went to. That's a terrible to. phrase. <laughs> it tells you that I went to Sunday school, basically. Okay, now I have whipped that up. I am going to take a... Look, the better phrase is, give a man a fire, he's warm for the day. Set a man on fire, he's warm for the rest of his life. Yes, I bet he is. I am going to wipe the cheese out of this. Add a little bit here and there. And then once again. If you're going to be cooking eggs, you want to make sure everything is slippery and slidey. So we take my canola oil and we spray profoundly because that's just what you do. And put it back on top here so that we'll get a little bit more heat in it. And then we pour the scrambled eggs in, or what will be scrambled eggs at this point. So, we have got that. And now we just let them start to coagulate a little bit. Popcorn break. Who said you could have popcorn? If, look, if you don't have enough to share with everybody, you don't talk about it. And if you do have enough to share with everybody, why don't we have some too? So, as you can see, when I tip the, the uh, thing back and forth, it's only just the frying pan back and forth. It's starting to get the eggs to stick to the bottom. And at this point, with scrambled eggs, you want to pull across. And what that does is let the eggs start to bond together and make them so that they start becoming what you think of as scrambled eggs. Now, if you continue to whip this wildly the whole time, what you're going to end up with is egg shreds. And that's just not fun to eat. It's not pretty to look at. And in all ways, it's bad. So we're not going to do that. We are going to let these egg form eggs. And the difference between a omelet and a scrambled egg is that uh, you stop cooking the 
the omelet when it is mostly done on both sides and you just have kind of a wet sheen on top. That's when you start adding the ingredients that are going to go in the omelet. With a scrambled egg, you keep turning these and pushing through them and pulling back and forth, turning them over. And I do that with a spoonchula, which is part rubber spatula and part spoon. It's one of my favorite tools at the kitchen. Um, you do not want to keep cooking scrambled eggs until they look like they're completely completely done like there's no liquid no sheen left anywhere because these eggs will continue to cook for a few minutes after you uh, pull them off and you don't want to overcook your eggs where even if you start with good eggs you're going to end up with something that tastes like a rubber ball and it will feel like a rubber ball so at this point you can see that there is still some liquid in the egg. That is almost perfect. I am going to flip these again and give them maybe another 30 seconds and then the scrambled eggs will be done. Now if you wanted to do the scrambled egg version of the omelet I just did, you would have put, once you put down the eggs, you would have put the mushrooms and the cheese and the uh, bacon in it and then had them in here when you were flipping things around. Okay. Now, make sure this does not have any cheese on it or bacon. And we will now take the eggs, which as you can see still look moist. If you looked in here, they would still look moist, but they aren't runny. And that is the point when your eggs are done as a scrambled egg. So we will put those on a plate. And now take this off to the side. Put a little bit more parsley on top so it looks pretty. And I'm also going to grind a little bit of pepper over the top. Now my mother is going to want to eat these with ketchup. And I won't show that on camera. <laughs> but here is your scrambled eggs. So they are glossy and they are moist and they hold their form, which is what you're looking for. Okay, we'll move that off to the side. And that would be the scrambled eggs and egg portion. Now I am going to make my comfort food dish of the night, which is creamed salmon on toast. So you get to make, get to watch me start by taking and making a bechamel. And I have mentioned this many times, what a bechamel is. It is basically a white sauce. It's one of the mother sauces. And it is made with starting with a roux. I need half of a stick of butter. I'm going to cut that off here, and then I will cut into about tablespoon slices, and half of a stick of butter is four tablespoons. So I'm actually doing this a little bit less than four uh, in slices, so they're not full tablespoon slices. And that goes in there. I will probably add a little bit extra, make a little more sauce than I was going to. So, okay, I've got five tablespoons in there. And 
what we do now is we make sure that this is melting. And that is going to use possibly where's my milk bill? There it is. Uh, my flour. My flour is down here. And I am going to add less than half a cup. It's going to be about a third of a cup of flour. And I will add this in on top of the butter. And what you want to do with your roux is after you get the butter and the flour in there, you want to whisk them together so they become a nice... Uh, you want, you're aiming for something that is a lot like moist sand in uh, texture for making your roux. And then you want to let it cook for a few minutes because you do not want it to taste like raw flour. That is just not fun for anybody. So once you get this whipped together, like that, you leave it alone for a couple minutes. And if I can shake it, put that off to the side, because it's not hot anymore space to get the bacon away from me. Ugh. Away by a pig. I'm going to wash my hands since I did have some bacon touch my hands. And that is bad for me. Very, very bad. So, I'm going to wash my hands once. And I'm going to wash my hands a second time. Mom's eggs are over there. Uh, no. Um, hold on and I will cut the toast. So there we have cut toast for mom. All right. So you can see that this is bubbling now and it has turned a slightly different color. It's turned a paler color which is what you're looking for. If you continue to cook this, what you will end up with is a darker roux, and it will eventually turn almost a chocolate brown and take on a very nutty flavor. And that's generally the roux that you want if you're going to be making something like a gumbo. Hi, MPH. What you doing? I am going to be making creamed salmon on toast because that's what I want to eat for dinner. I have just made, I have de demonstrated how to make an omelet, the fold over type, uh, to my viewers twice. And I made a cheese, mushroom, and bacon omelets for my father and my husband. I made scrambled eggs for my mother. And I am not on speaking terms with pork. And I am also not on uh, speaking terms with meat right now in general. So. That is why I decided I wanted to have creamed salmon on toast. And I am adding probably three cups of milk to this. And I'm going to whisk that in here to make sure that the flour is nice and incorporated. And now, a white sauce, or a bechamel, is a very simple sauce that starts with a roux and then you add milk to it. And I know you can use butter instead. It depends on what I'm cooking and, and what I want to do. And uh, I use the um, canola oil, especially if it's going to have anything for mom in it, because uh, mom can't have the dairy for the butter, and I don't care for margarine in cooking. So I will either use just oil or I will use a butter with a little bit of oil in it so that it raises the uh, scorching temperature basically on the butter. 
So what I'm going to do is add some pink salmon to this and some salt and pepper and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, parsley into it and then I'm going to do the thing that grosses everybody out every single time and that is I am going to add ketchup to this which adds a slight uh, sweet tomato profile to this not enough to make it like it's a tomato sauce I call it a rosy um, a rosy white sauce that this is uh, being put in with and I call it that because you just add enough ketchup to it that it's the same color as the pink salmon so and you don't taste it and think ooh tomato and you definitely don't taste it and go ooh ketchup it just has, it, it's just a flavor that complements the salmon, and uh, especially a canned salmon. And it, uh, you can do it with leftover salmon as well, by the way. You can put your leftover salmon in this if you don't know what to do with it. Now, I have never had leftover salmon in my life, so that's not really something that comes up. Uh, we have a lot of seafood out here, and we enjoy it greatly. But when you put the canned salmon in here, my grandmother used to make this as a dinner item, not as a breakfast item as I showed it last time, where I put it on poached eggs on toast, then I put a tuna cream made like the salmon cream I'm doing now um, over the top because it adds extra protein and it's creamy and yummy and the uh, liquid egg yolk of the over medium the medium done poached egg just adds this lovely velvety creaminess to the sauce it's just amazing um, my grandmother used to use one 15 ounce can of uh, sockeye salmon that came with bones and skin and you spent about an hour going through everything getting all of the vertebrae out and all of the bits of skin and scale and getting all of the little bones out that you could and after that grandma would make plain white sauce salt and pepper it add the ketchup to it and then add the salmon in and taste it to see if it had enough salt and pepper and then she would feed six people with that um, pretty thrifty all in all and something that tasted nice um, if she had wanted to add I don't think it ever occurred to her to add the eggs to it too and since she had her own chickens it's not like it was expensive um, she would uh, she did her best for her family and I mean that's really all you can really do and especially since she was someone who grew up during the Great Depression and you know, she lived in a railroad town, as a matter of fact, traveling across the United States with her uh, family as her father and older brothers uh, put in the railroad from New York to Washington State. And uh, they didn't have a lot of money ever, but, you know, they did okay. They raised four kids and uh, nobody went hungry. And when Grandma taught me to cook, she taught me the recipes she learned from her mother. And it was all regional cooking that ranged from the Midwest out to here. And she was very much into the comfort food variety. Her fried chicken with milk gravy and mashed potatoes is enough to make you see the face of God. <laughs> it's really, really good. Uh, my husband didn't think he was going to like that, and uh, when I made it for him, uh, he was disabused of that notion, shall we say. So, now, you want to keep this on a medium to medium high heat, nothing higher than that, because you do not want the milk to boil. If the milk boils, it can scald, and it can separate, it can break, and that is just nasty. Um, so you want to keep it to, at the most, a simmer. 
if you start seeing it boil, you do want to turn it down. I was talking about the fried chicken with milk gravy and mashed potatoes that I made you, and you couldn't believe anybody would like it till you tasted it. The fried chicken and mashed potatoes, sure, but the milk gravy was not something he'd ever experienced before. Now, the first hint that you're going to have that this white sauce is coming together as a sauce is that the parsley that was on top is starting to sink down into the sauce, which means it's basically gaining thickness enough to support the uh, parsley. And honestly, the parsley in this just goes to make it a little pretty. And you want to keep stirring this because you do not want anything to adhere to the bottom and burn and become nasty. And you just keep it moving constantly the entire time. Can you not hear me now? It's the microphone is telling me that it's working when I look at the feeder. Does anybody else hear me? Please answer if you do. Oh, okay. Well, I noticed a couple times when I was talking, the entire bar went red, and I don't know if that means I went over it or if it meant nothing was coming. You tab muted yourself. Well, you know, that can happen if you fall asleep during stream, sweetie. See, the problem is I fed him first. <laughs> so. Thank you for telling me you hear me. I appreciate it. Okay. This is turning into the sauce I want it to. It needs to get a little bit thicker before I add it. The problem is you feel tired. Yeah. You didn't sleep very much last night. You came in and went to bed and we're up five hours later. Still not sure why you were up five hours later. But. I wanted to let people know that we have reached our first sub goal, not sub goal, uh, first stream goal of getting money for some uh, further equipment. We have restarted a new one in that we would really like to uh, get more equipment to make the stream better. And I have also got a sub goal up I think of 10 and just to let people know when I get to 200 followers that's followers not subs when I get to 200 followers I am going to give away a PDF copy of my cookbook cooking with hedge pigs so you can all look forward to that and hopefully uh, one of you people will be the lucky winner of the free version. And we will figure out at that point then how exactly we go about selling my cookbook. And uh, that is close to 400 recipes. I'm doing the final editing on it right now. And the biggest problem is I could make it half again as big easily, very, very easily. So it's, it's kind of a hard choice, um, what to put in, what to leave out, and, you know, thinking onwards to, oh, hey, look at that, maybe I should do a second cookbook. We'll see. After I do the main one, I think I might s go into uh, specialty ones, so specialty topics. 
All right, now my sauce is getting close to the point where I want it to be. It is enough to start coating the back of a spoon. And this is salmon, isn't it, honey? Nope, it's tuna. Okay. Is it? Obviously, it's not as good as the Costco canned tuna that we used to buy. So I'm going to add in the fish. And this is uh, four cans of tuna, which are the little five-ounce cans. And I am going to stir that in here. And I am going to add enough ketchup that it will turn it slightly pink. And that is about a tablespoon. And then you whisk that in. And it turns the sauce that you've got here. Doesn't come across very well on camera, it looks like. But it is now the color of, basically, uh, it is the color of the pink salmon itself when it's cooked. So it's kind of a beigey pink. And I am going to put that back up on here so it can heat everything up and it can continue um, thickening the sauce to what I will want to put over toast. So we are rapidly coming to a end of stream here. Uh, you've seen me make fa uh, everybody's dinner tonight, uh, scrambled eggs and toast for my mother. You saw me, well you didn't see me make the toast, and actually I didn't make the toast, Andrew did. But I made scrambled eggs for her. I demonstrated how to uh, make omelets with two absolutely gorgeous cheese, mushroom, and bacon omelets. Uh, one of four egg and one of three egg, and those look really good even for me, I have to admit. And as soon as this gets a little bit thicker, I will be pouring this over toast, or actually ladling it or spooning it over toast. Uh, as I said, I had originally intended to do Chicken a la King today, and I'm just going to move that forward to Tuesday and hope that my digestion is a little nicer to me that day and makes it so I can stand tasting the meat. So this is not quite thick enough yet. It is getting there rapidly, though. What you're looking for is about the consistency of a medium-thin milkshake. You know, you start out with a thick milkshake and you can't really suck it up through the straw. And then you stir it around for a little bit, and it gradually gets thin enough that uh, you can slurp it up your straw, but it still has that uh, thickness of ice cream. That's about the consistency you want in this. You want to have it be enough that it is not just poured like water over your plate, but you do not want to have it so thick that, you know, you're shaking it off of a spoon like it's peanut butter. And the good thing about making a white sauce is if it gets too thick, you just add a little more milk. You can add water too, but, you know, you got the milk there. So we are almost done with this and I will make another plate. And I am just 
just keeping stirring this, keeping it going around and around here in the pot so that I am scraping down often in a kind of a swirly S pattern and then making sure I get the sides of the pot so nothing burns onto the side of the pot either. And I just keep going as the sauce keeps thickening. I'm going to take and taste this. And I'm going to use a wooden spoon because my spatula actually touched bacon. And I don't want that anywhere near me. That's pretty good. Needs some salt. I thought it would because I hadn't added any salt to it yet. So I am going to add probably a quarter teaspoon of salt. And I am going to add a little bit of pepper because as I said, I like pepper. Not a whole lot. This isn't uh, something that you want to have be really peppery. So I just added a couple grinds of pepper there. And I will mix it up again. And I think you can see that it's gaining consistency there. It's getting thicker. It's more like a yogurt drink at this point. So we are almost at the point where I will be dishing this up. I think it also needs a little bit more ketchup. Doesn't quite have the right flavor yet. And the right flavor would be, uh, you can just slightly taste a tomato on the back end of what you're eating. All right. So, honey, if I could have another plate, that would be awesome. I'm going to turn the heat off under this now. I know, sweetie. Once more floats overhead. Looming. Almost like he's hungry. Oh, please don't put him on my head. He's heavy. <laughs> so I'm going to take a couple pieces of toast and I'm going to put them end to end because why not? The ends fit together better. And this is done now. So I am going to take it off. I will spoon this over the top of my toast. It's kind of the idea of uh, the cream chip beef. La 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 My husband does so enjoy the embarrassing ones. Alrighty then. And at that point, make that a little bit prettier with drips. And 
add a light little dusting here of, say it with me, parsley, fresh over the top. And what you have here is creamed salmon on toast. And it is creamy, and you can taste the salmon and just a hint of tomato in that and it tastes because you use ketchup instead of just like a tomato sauce uh, what you're tasting is a sweeter tomato taste like as if it was vine ripened so there is our third dinner there and uh, third dish that I have made and I want to thank everybody for coming um, Let's see, do I have any actual chefs on at the moment doing chef things? Uh, yeah, we have Waybread. Uh, he's a lovely streamer. He does catering, and he's a lot of fun to watch. He has spontaneous dance breaks, and he is just a really fabulous cook and a really nice guy. So he is definitely someone, if you are interested in cooking, you want to go over and visit him. So I will say now that I will be back at 6 o'clock Pacific time on Tuesday night and we will be making chicken a la king and with steamed rice and um, I thank you very much for your time and coming and seeing us and I hope you go ahead and come with us for the raid.